Three months and a day since intruders stormed the RV of the Greenville-based music group Parmalee. Drummer Scott Thomas was shot three times in the attack and, by all accounts, is lucky to be alive today. Thomas was shot three times during an armed robbery attempt in uh, Rock Hill, South Carolina, after a show. He's now recovering. The band is using the experience as inspiration for new music. I really didn't know I was hit until a minute later when I felt a burn in my stomach. When they say hot lead, that's, that's what I felt. We were traveling a lot. The success of the band happened. We were on a whirlwind for two or three years, and it's just one of those things that hits you. I almost died. So we played a, a pickup gig on a Monday night at a little club called The Money in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We were actually working our way back out to Nashville, so these were like just rehearsal shows, just taking on any gig we could. We played the show, I think 15 people, 20 people showed up. Um, the guy paid us our $15. We had just gotten this RV. So proud of this. Yeah, it was, it was great. It was somewhere we could drive and sleep in. We finished the show. We, Scott and I had pulled the RV around to come start loading in the gear. Barry and Josh were still in the club, and there's a knock on the door. The door, we always kept it locked, but I opened it up because I thought it was Barry and Josh or somebody you know we knew from the show, but it wasn't. It was a gun in my head. Two guys in bandanas forced me back up into the up steps and then shut the door behind them and they were demanding cash. I was in the back, not sure what I was getting, but getting stuff, and I heard them yell, give me the money, give me the money, and it's, this RV's not really that big, so you're talking eight to 10 feet, so you can kind of see what's going on, and immediately, I knew we were in trouble. The guy fired, he said, give me your fucking money, and, and fired the gun in the RV. I don't know if you've ever been in an RV with a, a, a gun going off. That, that was when it all just went to yeah. yeah, it went to yeah. I did have a pistol in my bunk. Basically saw the guys, had about two seconds to think, grabbed my pistol, put it behind me, walked up real slow, kind of with my hands up because he's screaming, Scott help, Scott help. So I'm guessing they were thinking I was bringing money, but as soon as I got close enough and clear enough that I thought I wouldn't hurt him. I shot that gentleman with a gun and I knew there was two guys and the other gentleman was kind of down behind some steps. So I knew I had seven bullets. I had to do what I could to use all seven rounds to, to take them out. And I shot him and I, after I shot him a couple of times, I was shooting at the other gentleman. One of the guys was, was dead. The other guy ran out of the RV and collapsed right behind it. And I think Barry jumped over him when he was running up to see what happened to Scott. I really didn't know I was hit until a minute later when I felt a burn in my stomach. When they say hot lead, that's, that's what I felt. After all the smoke cleared, he yeah. said they got me. And then he was laying on the couch, bleeding out. I got hit once in the chest, once in the, one in the stomach, and I guess it spun me around because I got hit in the butt, but that clipped my artery. And that was a pretty bad shot. And the last thing I remember were the police officers coming in with lights, shining stuff on my eyes, and I just remember saying, just don't let me die. And that's basically the last thing I remember. I was in a coma for 10 days. What I'm going through is different from what they're going through. We had to make the phone calls, and the, you know, of course we didn't know how bad it was until we get to the hospital. And then the doctor finally bringing us back, and he's like, most people with these injuries have a 5% chance of living. But I hung a little hope on that five percent, you know. I do remember finally waking up. I did remember what had happened vaguely. That I knew I'd been shot. I knew I was in the hospital. First words were, "We're not playing any more sh clubs." First words come out of my mouth. It gave them hope just to hear that come out of my mouth. All I cared about was just trying to get well. Didn't really know. They didn't let me know how bad it was. They just said, you can't leave the hospital until you walk on your own. You know, he was sliced on his calves and down his stomach. His foot wasn't working. You know, that was that was evident. That he may never play drums again. He may never walk again. And we learned about all the procedures. We learned that if he could do his physical therapy uh, and, and make that so many feet, hell, we had him doing that like weeks before. They, they wouldn't let him out because he had open wounds, but we were still doing double PTs every day. We had round the clock you know, friends that would take duties and stay and always, you know, be there. And, and being with all our friends and everybody being so close, it's kind of helped, helped out a lot. 
The first year was all about recuperating, getting ready. So it actually, I know it doesn't make sense, but it took several years for it to soak in on me out here. We were traveling a lot. The success of the band happened. We were on a whirlwind for two or three years. And I think it was just, we had a break or maybe a little break. And it's just one of those things that hits you. Just had anxiety. And I just said, wow, what had just happened? I almost died. We just had this, all the success. It's, I mean, I dealt with it, but I understood why I hadn't, you know, felt that way before. But uh, yeah, it happened.